All right, again, thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Caleb Talley. I'm the Director of Marketing and Events at Startup Junkie Foundation. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with us at Startup Junkie, we are a mission-driven organization based here in Northwest Arkansas with an office in Fayetteville. Uh, and we exist uh, to empower innovators and entrepreneurs. We do that uh, mainly in two facets. One is through one-on-one -on -one consulting uh, with entrepreneurs, small business owners, anybody with an idea, um, from idea stage to $25 million in revenue. We're here to help you at absolutely no cost. And the other facet of how we help um, entrepreneurs is through events, uh, workshops, networking events, things exactly like this. Um, even in the in our new modern virtual world, uh, we're still uh, churning out events and connecting entrepreneurs to one another and uh, with the goal of you know building a community here uh, in Arkansas around entrepreneurship. Uh, so today's speaker, uh, for those of you, many of you already know her, she's uh, presented this series uh, for the past year and a half about, uh, speaker Martha Londigan. She's an executive business consultant with Startup Junkie Foundation, where she also serves as a capital access manager for the Northwest Arkansas uh, Kiva uh, microloan program. She's a former small business banker and attorney, and she is very active with many Northwest Arkansas Chambers of Commerce and networking groups in the region. Uh, this Her Entrepreneur Journey series uh, that was started uh, a couple of years back or a year and a half back um, is sponsored by Bank OZK, which is a, re a regional bank headquartered in Little Rock. Uh, with more than 250 locations in nine states, uh, with many community bank locations here in Northwest Arkansas dedicated to serving small business owners and entrepreneurs. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Martha. All right, thank you, Caleb, and hello to everyone. I'm gonna start out with a screen share of our Startup Junkie uh, website. This is the center point if you're you know, if you, sometimes we have people come on these uh, webinars that just happen to get something from Eventbrite, and I always want to make sure people know about Startup Junkie and that our resources are at no cost to entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, business owners in uh, the nine county region of Northwest Arkansas. And so you can always go here to the About tab. Uh, and see there, it says our team, you click on that, that takes you to our bios, it'll get you to my email um, to book an appointment with me. Here it lists all our services, so one-on-one -on -one consulting. We talk to people who are thinking about starting a business in a year. We talked to people uh, last year, in COVID, we talked to people who were in crisis mode and helped us all to, I have a, a background in SBA lending, so helping people to figure out this new animal that emerged called the PPP loan. Uh, none of the bankers had seen it before and, and none of the banks. And so we were all trying to figure that out together. We do workshops and programs like this. Um, always feel free to look up Startup Junkie YouTube channel and click videos at the top. And there is a wealth of wonderful videos that Caleb, uh, Caleb Talley is our, is our marketing um, coordinator and director. And he loads all of these, this wonderful content there for you. So you can watch that at any time. You can share the link with other people. Uh, we also have co-working space at our office in Fayetteville. Uh, we do have guidelines. It is a University of Arkansas owned building. So it has certain hours and you have to wear a mask, but we have free Wi-Fi in a warm place. Uh, you can uh, sit on your laptop out in the hall or in one of our rooms. Uh, we also have over here a COVID, uh, you can see here, uh, Caleb's wonderful series of guides and blogs he's written about all of the PPP loan programs and uh, SBA loans. And then uh, with our programs here, Caleb mentioned the Northwest Arkansas Kiva Hub. That is a one to $15,000 online uh, microloan program that we help people navigate. Kiva's out of California. And so I and one of our other program associates, Alvin Singh, work with that. Uh, we also have a fuel accelerator uh, funded by the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, where um, every year uh, people on our team work to attract certain types of uh, tech companies to come and get to know Northwest Arkansas. And then we have our science venture studio run by Katie Thompson, who works with <clears throat> people with innovative products and science uh, ideas and helps them to get um, possible SBI, TTR governing. So that's, that's who we are. Um, and I want to switch here to our Bank OZK uh, website. 
I really, we are so fortunate in Arkansas to have a bank that started in Jasper, Arkansas, which is just about, about I guess about 50 miles from here in 1903 and has become, a, they have over 200 locations now throughout the United States, but throughout Northwest Arkansas, we have actual bank OZK brick and mortar locations with small business bankers and retail teams that will help you with your business checking account, your POS system, help you with SBA loans or in-house business loans. Um, I know the Bank OZK people personally. Um, in our series, we'll do the rest of the year. Um, Audwin Vaughn, who is the market president for Bank OZK up here, comes on himself. We'll have Lance Sexton, who's a loan officer for Bank OZK, and we'll have other people of the bank. They're just a very, although they have become a very large national bank, they are very, very local here in Northwest Arkansas. And we are appreciative of their sponsorship of this program so that we can have a space for women. Because as we all know, women have historically, it is very documented, been discriminated against um, with capital, with society in general, with government programs, and being denied the ability to start and run their businesses. And so we are very appreciative to have a, a bank that wants to support and encourage women in our Her Entrepreneur Journey series for 2021. So now I'm going to go ahead and get started on the program. I'll show you first where we're going to end up. Um, it, it gets wonky with Zoom to go back and forth between a, a, a PowerPoint and the internet. So I'm going to show you a little bit here is, is LinkedIn. So if some of you aren't super familiar with LinkedIn, I don't want you to be kind of going, I don't know what she's talking about when I'm doing the PowerPoint. So when I talk about the profile, this is what your profile looks like as an individual in LinkedIn. And then you can see here, there's a little icon and it says Startup Junkie. So if you click on that, that takes you to the Startup Junkie. It says, states my, uh, that I work for Startup Junkie as a business consultant, but here is the Startup Junkie company page. So just like Facebook has a personal profile and then you have a business Facebook page, LinkedIn does the same thing. So Caleb and I are both admins on the Startup Junkie um, uh, LinkedIn page. So that's why it's linked there for me. And so one of the things I really encourage everyone to do, I don't care if you're a sole proprietor selling goods out of your garage or your back bedroom, or if you have a brick and mortar store, you as an individual, as that owner should have a LinkedIn page that says right here that you are the founder or owner of blank business. And I don't care if it's not an LLC, if you have a DBA, if you're an artist and you have a name, you know, your name is Sarah Johnson and you have Sarah Johnson Art Studio, that should be on your personal LinkedIn. And then it's very simple uh, to go in up here on your profile and you can set up, notice here it has company startup junkie. You can go in and create a company page uh, for your business. So when I talk in the presentation in a minute about company page versus the uh, profile page, that's what I'm talking about. So I wanted to show you this a little bit. Then in LinkedIn, instead of your, this is your feed, this is worth what they call home, the feed. So you can see here, I follow the University of Arkansas LinkedIn page. I follow um, uh, Christine Tan. She's, her mother is Chung Tan, who's with the uh, City of Fayetteville's Office of Economic Vitality. And she's a, a COO at Supply Place, Pike, a local software company. So I follow Christine. I follow Kiva. I administer the Kiva Microloan. So all of these are companies and individuals who have LinkedIn pages and do posts on LinkedIn. And so that's where I follow them. So I just wanted to show you all that a little bit here at first so that you understand where we're going. And we'll come back to LinkedIn. Um, I'm gonna do some um, presentations about it individually, uh, some exercises. So now I'm going to stop the share there 
and go to um, what I want to do now is if, if each of you, because we don't have a big bunch of people. So actually, you know, if I had 60 people here, I wouldn't have time with this just being a one hour presentation, but I'm going to call out your name that I see. And if you want to, if you would just unmute yourself and say your name and what business you have or what business you're in. If you you know, work for J.B. Hunt or Tyson or University of Arkansas, just say, hi, my name's so-and-so and I do this or I work here. Or you can come on and say, pass. You won't hurt my feelings a bit. So uh, first on my screen is Catherine Gates. Catherine, do you wanna tell us what you do? I'd be happy to, yeah. So I'm Catherine Gates. I'm the Executive Director for Women in the Marketplace. We're a nonprofit marketplace ministry that helps equips women to confidently pursue their faith and career for the glory of God. I'm also the author of The Confidence Cornerstone. Wonderful. And where are you coming to us today? Where are you in at? In Fayetteville. In Fayetteville. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. All right. Next, I have Sandy Macklem. I know all about you, Sandy, but would you tell everybody what you do? Sure. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm at, speaking of not being visible and at the gym working out. So, um, my name is Sandy Macklem. I'm the owner founder of Sandy Sue's Gluten Free Bakery. Um, the reason Martha knows me is because we just went through the Kiva micro loan process. So, exciting, exciting. Um, I'm about to um, release one of my products um, on the mass market scale, targeting local restaurants and uh, local retailers in the Northwest Arkansas area. All right. And Sandy, you're in Bentonville, right? Yes, ma'am. Great. All right. And you all already met Caleb. Um, Taylor, I don't know if Taylor's able to come on. Taylor, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Yeah, My name is Taylor Hasley. I'm the executive director of Startup Junkie Foundation. Excited to be here. Thanks, Taylor. And Morgan? Hey everybody, my name is Morgan and I'm also on the Startup Junkie team as a business consultant. So glad to be here. I've heard this presentation from Martha like three times and I learned something <laughs> every single time. So it's great. Awesome. Great. All right. And Miss Jody, I know you. Jody, can you say hello? Oh, Jody put pass in the comments. Oh, she put pass. Oh, I can't see that. All right. Thank you. We're glad you're here though, Jody. Um, Next is uh, uh, Jamae Sanderson. Jamae, did I say your name correctly? You did, it's Jamae. And I haven't started a business yet, but I'm wanting to open up a plus size boutique sometime in the future for like trendy clothes for women my age and I'm 19. So okay. that's kind of my goal. Great, thank you for coming on board. And regardless after this, reach out, um, go to our Startup Junkie site and it just has a button that says book an appointment with us, meet with us. And one of us would love to assist you with that. Never any Yeah, time. of course. Yeah, great. And Miss Debbie, how are you? Can you say hello to everyone? Hi, I'm Debbie Winters. I'm an attorney here in, in uh, Fayetteville, Northwest Arkansas. I do intellectual property and business law. And I was really excited about um, this presentation because LinkedIn is one of the um, platforms that I feel like I don't really know that much about and don't take advantage of. So I'm interested in hearing what Martha has to say about it. Yeah, great. And that's a very good point. A lot of people, I think, forget about LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is one of my favorite class platforms. Um, Alice has taken a pass. Alice, we're glad you're here. And Marie, would you like to say hello and tell us what you do? Sure, I'm Marie Stacks. I am president at Boost Midwest, and um, we actually were founded in Little Rock. Um, so, but I'm coming from Chicago right now. So, oh wow, <laughs> wonderful! Thank you. I think we've actually had matching weather this past week. Shockingly, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> we did. Okay, and then I've got someone named Clay. Clay, would you like to introduce yourself and tell what your business interest is? Sure. Um, uh, my name is Clay, and I established an LLC last year called Outhouse Products. Um, actually launching a new brand, and I can do share screen if you like, but basically think about keep calm and blah, blah, blah. So mine is blank A dot F dot, where A dot F can mean and fun, or and fabulous, or something else. So I've got uh, face coverings and t-shirts. I'm working on getting this all worked out, details, launching, 
um, which is really hard uh, to do. Yeah. Um, but feedback so in public coming? has been great. Yeah. Where are you coming to us from, Clay? Uh, I'm in Bentonville. I You're worked Bentonville? for Walmart. Yeah, I worked for Walmart for about seven years at the home office in IT. Um, then I worked for Sam's Club for a couple of years in IT. And prior to that, worked in Kansas City, the Yellow Freight in IT. So long history in IT, but always wanted to create something new. Great. Well, if you haven't connected with Startup Junkie um, it already, like I said, go to our page and click meet with us. And we have all of our team are we'll be happy to meet with you and, and guide you on. We, we meet with about 800 entrepreneurs a year in Northwest Arkansas. So love right. to have you get involved with us. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clay. All right. Now I'm going to go to my actual formal presentation. And um, after this uh, is over, I will be uh, making a PDF copy of this and sending it to uh, Caleb. And he will email this out to you. So if there's any question or I go past a slide and you wish there had been something on it, um, then uh, you'll be getting that from Caleb. Now, notice what I like to do is I combine this LinkedIn one with uh, actual live networking. Even though uh, live networking is not possible now in, in many ways, one, the world is going to open back up, right? And eventually we'll, we'll be together and we can actually shake hands. Um, and I think we need to also realize that everything that's in this presentation, um, you know, it says enthusiastic, effective, efficient networking. And so I'm a former high school English teacher. I love uh, alliteration and assonance, so you can see my, my ease. But it helps me to remember what's important about networking. You have to be enthusiastic. If you're just going to show up and sit in a corner, you know, you're missing out. But I also think we have an opportunity online right now to have that same enthusiasm, to be effective with our networking, and to be efficient. And to me, LinkedIn is one of the best places to do that. And now if I can get my slides to advance, there we go. Um, once again, there's the, the website for Bank OZK, just the OZK.com. Uh, highly appreciate their support of all of our programs. We're going to hopefully have about 15 programs for women this year. So uh, keep up with us on our Startup Junkie Facebook page. That's one of the best places to see our events that are coming up or sign up for our newsletter. Women and entrepreneurs in Arkansas were reclassified in 2017 by the state to be part of the minority business uh, enterprise program because unfortunately only about 24-25% of all small businesses in Arkansas are owned by women and it should be 50%. So Governor Hutchison um, did not was not happy with that statistic and there is a big emphasis in the state of Arkansas and with a lot of entrepreneur support groups to support women because we know historically uh, you know, I, I've talked to a woman after woman. I had women in my family who were told by bankers, uh, you know, I just can't make you this loan unless your husband is okay with it or unless you can't open this bank account unless your husband co-signs for it. It took a federal law um, in 1978 to end that kind of uh, credit discrimination. And so women are still a little bit behind in the access to capital and also uh, the attitudes, but I, I do see it greatly changing. I see great empowerment of women supporting each other. Um, there's a link, you'll be able to look it up if you want to. Uh, it's an article I did in 2018, a pretty lengthy article that they actually decided to publish the whole thing in the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal about the history of women in business and how, how new the rights and access are to us. And I think it's important to always appreciate that and to educate younger women to be appreciative and grateful and to remember that sometimes we have to step up and take uh, what is rightly ours and demand um, proper respect and treatment and equal access to all things in business. And so that's an article of mine you can look up online from the great Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. Um, these are also some groups, uh, like I said, I'll be sending this out to you when we get finished, you can look them up. We have Women in Networking. Uh, it's a great group that meets up in Rogers for a monthly luncheon. Uh, Meredith Lowry is a local um, attorney at, at, with uh, a firm up in Rogers, and she has a quarterly group that meets. At all, a lot of these are meeting online right now called Woman Run. Um, Siloam Springs has a great women in business group that has meetings and events, and they have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. 
Hustle and Heels is an incredible uh, women's networking group that meets major meetings quarterly, sometimes little pop-up events, and it's a part of a division of the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce. They facilitate it. Conexión de Negocios is a Latina group that is uh, based in uh, Springdale, and they have lots of women, uh, Latina and Hispanic women, who are involved in that group. And then I listed some national sites um, that you can look at their websites and get ideas. Sometimes they have online trainings and programs. So networking builds these things. When you go out to Chamber of Commerce events, when you go to women's groups, when you get online and interact with people on uh, platforms like LinkedIn, which is business minded, it advances your career by not only putting yourself out there as a person of knowledge, a person who, who is, is in the know, a person who is friendly, a person is connected, but if you work for a company, instead of own your company, you are helping to advance the brand of your business. Perhaps you are helping to attract talent to your company because people get to know you and see that you're happy with your job and you're good at what you do. I just did this presentation exactly two weeks ago for the Western Arkansas uh, HR uh, Association, Human Resources Association out of Fort Smith, because a lot of HR people, that's their job is to help attract and retain good talent to their company. It helps to uh, get public knowledge out about your company by networking and it connects and gives back. And so giving back is a big part of the, the networking presentations I always do. It's, it's, it should be part of every business plan. How do you give back to the community? If you're going to say shop local, if you're going to say we're a community bank, if you're going to say, you know, you should use my services and not hire some internet provider in California because I'm local, how are you giving back to the community? You're asking the community to support you. LinkedIn is a great way and a great place, and so is social media, even with your like business Facebook, to show how you give back to the community. So I'm going to throw this question out there. I'll take a couple of answers if somebody hasn't ever seen this. This is an actual Harvard study. And I have the study, it's pretty long, from 2017, published in the Journal of Social Psychology, what is the number one thing people do that makes other people then say, that's a likable person? Does anybody want to venture a guess? And I can't see the chat. So Morgan, if you see the chat. Yeah, Martha, so we've had, uh, okay, I guessed smile uh -huh. in, in the chat, and then Catherine guessed listen. Okay, smile is a good answer. I get that one a lot. Listen is close. The number one thing you can do to make people describe you as likable is ask questions about them. What a shocker, right? We like to talk about ourselves. This, to me, is a really important thing to know in networking for two reasons. If you are, and I think by now you can all tell, I don't have a problem talking. I am an overly enthusiastic person. I, I have on my second grade report card that I got in trouble for that in the second grade. My husband said, you have not changed a bit since the second grade. So talking to people is not a problem for me. The problem is I might talk too much about myself, right? If you are a shy person and you're just really uncomfortable talking about yourself, especially to strangers, this is your answer, right? So if I am meeting someone at a networking event and I am asking them questions about themselves, it's pretty assured I'm not talking about myself too much. I'm not talking about my company and what I do. If you're a shy person and you, you just are uncomfortable talking about yourself to strangers, Ask, you're asking people questions about themselves, and you can maybe feel better knowing that a Harvard study says it's going to make them like you. And I'm going to talk in a minute about some of the questions I like to ask people that I think are good networking, icebreaking questions. So these are my easy three Bs. Number one is bear a badge. Uh, when you go out to public networking events, when your name's not on the screen like in a Zoom, people don't know exactly who you are. One, have a badge with your name on it. And I, I do have a badge. We have badges at Startup Junkie. And when we go out to public events and, and don't have like, you know, I tell people you don't have to wear a badge when you're on a Zoom. I get that. Your name's on the screen. 
but people want to instantly know one that you're a business professional that you're not just like they're hanging out with your friend and two what kind of business you're with also it becomes really important for remembering names the second b is be present and the third is be a giver so i'm going to show you in these next slides all of these things also translate to online so just like when you go to a networking event your profile on linkedin should have your name your business history what your title is and what you do just like your business cards do uh, first impression matters don't go to a networking event and not take cards i will tell you i don't care if people think it's old-fashioned in northwest arkansas business cards matter it's how people make business and get to know each other shake hands or i think the fist pump is going to stay with us probably for a while but also be enthusiastic about the event and ask people proper questions. So this is a big one that I like to talk about is the questions. If you first meet someone at a business event and don't ask them, well, are you married? Do you have kids? Those are very personal questions. Um, I also tend to see those questions asked of women more than men. And that irritates me. I'm at a business event. I'm here to talk business. I'm here to tell you about my business. Why on earth is it any of your business whether or not I have chosen to have a child? All right. Now, obviously, if something comes up, if you say, hey, I just saw you come in. How are you today? And I say, oh my gosh, I'm late. I had to drop my kids off at soccer practice. Of course, it's perfectly natural to say, oh, how old are your kids? Oh, my son played soccer. That's a normal conversation. But the, the questions I think are business focused and keep people interested in each other and are pertinent is to ask someone, what brings you to this event? Are you a member of the Rogers Low Area Chamber of Commerce? Did you just join the Fayetteville Chamber? Do you work in this building? Did you come with someone else? What brings you to this event? What is your type of business? You know, sometimes I'll say to people, if it's a really casual event, I'll say, what's your day job? Or what do you do for money? Or are you in business? What kind of business, you know? So talk about business, which is the reason you're probably at the business networking event. And then one of my favorite ones, if you want to get a little more personal and, and, and try to connect with people, a question I like to ask people is, where did you attend high school? And that can really open up a lot of personal information that connects you because of geography, because of community. So are, are they a native to Northwest Arkansas? Did they, like 52% of the people in Bentonville now, move into Northwest Arkansas? So I think that's a fun question. It gets a little more to the personal and friendly level without imposing. Because I'm gonna tell you what, if you walk up to somebody and say, oh, are you married? And they say, Actually, I just got divorced last week. Boy, that, that conversation has nowhere to go but south, all right? So watch this kind, you know, always remember that everything you think, you don't have to say. And so part of being a person who is empathetic and who is inclusive is realizing that your job at a networking event or your job at a company event is to make sure other people are comfortable. All right, be present, walk around the room. I honestly try, and this is what I got in trouble in second grade on my report card for, I am a person who just, I like to look for people that don't look like they're having fun. I like to look for people that look like they're struggling or they don't know where to go. That's just me, that's just how I am. I like to help other people feel comfortable. And so I will sometimes look for a person who's standing by their self that I can tell has never been to the event or a person looking for something. Uh, choose networking groups or uh, committee functions or an association that you like and you're comfortable with them so you'll go regularly. Rogers Low Area Chamber of Commerce, Springdale Chamber of Commerce, Bentonville, they'll have sometimes four events in a week. I'm not saying go to all four events of every chamber. Pick one if you like the coffee connection, but go to that monthly coffee connection every month. Begin to have a presence and be shown as a person who supports that group or that committee or that particular event. And then a great way to follow up with people is to send a LinkedIn connection to them after an event. 
it it is I, I can't even think of the last time I declined a LinkedIn connection from someone LinkedIn is a business if you're in business and you're interested in business I don't even care if you live in California now I will tell you my Facebook my personal Facebook that's friends I look at the profiles. I look at the profiles and make a decision. And all the women who are on this call will be able to tell you that sometimes I get Facebook friend requests, requests to follow on my Instagram, that I can tell that that gentleman and I have absolutely nothing in common. And the reason that he is sending me that LinkedIn, I mean that um, Instagram or that <clears throat> Facebook friend request has nothing to do with interest in my life and my career. All right, so I will decline that. And, you know, I just decline it. I don't have a problem. I don't have people coming and saying, why didn't you accept my friend request? I just decline it. But LinkedIn is that wonderful safe space because it's about business. And my experience since I have been on LinkedIn since 2012 is I have not had any of the, the nastiness. There's not political stuff. There's not um, hot, but social issue stuff people just really interact well and you learn on linkedin and i absolutely love it i love facebook i love instagram but they're mine and i'm going to be on my instagram and my facebook with my friends and my people all right and majority of that is women actually and honestly um but my linkedin i am perfectly comfortable accepting a connection from someone i just met for five minutes at a networking event the night before be a giver. So this is the last of my B's. When people tell you what they're doing, please listen to them. Look them in the eyes. Don't just say, what do you do for work? And then start looking off and waving at your friend you saw come in across the room. Really try to get to know people and then ask them, wow, um, I think I know someone in that industry or I know someone who's looking for this service. Figure out a way to give back to others. That for me comes naturally a lot. I like to help other people. I, I'm a business consultant, right? My job is to help people grow their businesses. That's my job. My job is to connect people to the Food Innovation Lab at the U of A, to the Brewer Hub, to the Small Business Center at the University of Arkansas. That's my job. I'm a connector. So that comes easy to me. But for sometimes to be a giver, all you can do is ask someone, is there any way after knowing what I do how I could help you, what's a good referral I could make for you? I will promise you over time, this will come back to you. So if you want to look at it from a monetary standpoint, from an ROI standpoint, the more you give to other people, the more you will be top of mind for them when they hear about someone who needs your goods or your services, or when you maybe exit your job and need a new job and you're putting out on LinkedIn that you're looking for a new job or a new position, those people are gonna have positive feelings for you because you helped them in their business. You helped them find a job. Um, so I've already talked quite a bit about Chambers of Commerce. We are huge Chamber of Commerce cheerleaders at Startup Junkie Foundation. Our team goes to those events a lot. We provide content and educational materials and partner with them. But look for some of those other like interest groups. If you ask around in your industry, like Morgan. Morgan is our HR professional. She's our, our human resources uh, subject matter expert. And she's involved with NOARC, <clears throat> which is the Northwest Arkansas group uh, for uh, HR professionals. She has kept that connection with them. Obviously relates well to what we do at Startup Junkie. There are also paid referral groups in Northwest Arkansas, such as uh, Business um, <clears throat> Networking International, it's called BNI, Masterminds of Biz. These are groups where you pay a fee, and I think some of them are up to like four and $500 a year, but within that networking group, they only allow one person who does life insurance, one person who does business insurance, one person who does car insurance and their job is they refer business to each other. So they'll have one banker that does home mortgages, one banker and, and she only does uh, business loans. Uh, all that, all different types of businesses, but just one particular industry and they meet each week 
they're pretty strict about you showing up and everybody reports on business they have referred to each other and i have a lot of friends and colleagues in northwest arkansas that have told me that these uh, networking groups have worked very well to help refer business for them but once again if you're in the group and you're not referring business and being a giver to other people i'm assuming they will kick you out of the group so you can't just go there and have other people refer business to you once again, it's that third B, be a giver. Um, there are also free uh, weekly networking groups where you get to pop up and tell who you are and what you do for 60 seconds. Um, you can type these into Facebook. There's creative referral network. They're based out of Fayetteville and central referral network based out of Rogers, also a program supported by the Rogers Lowell Area Chamber of Commerce. They're meeting on Zoom. Sometimes they meet in public. I would assume they may be getting back to public next week after the, gov the governor's change um, on groups. So look those up in Facebook if you're in Northwest Arkansas. Social group, Rotary, Kiwanis. And the last one I wanna talk about that people forget about a lot as a networking option is nonprofit groups. If there is a nonprofit group that you really like and want to support, maybe you can't afford to send them a hundred bucks a month, but you could volunteer to be on their board. And in Northwest Arkansas, when you get involved with nonprofit groups, you will sometimes be working side by side with U of A students, um, homeless folk. You will be working side by side with regular people who don't have college degrees that just love to give back and work and dig trees or help the homeless. And you will at times meet people who are icons of business in Northwest Arkansas. Through my interactions with nonprofit groups, I have met some people who are original high level founders of JB Hunt, of Walmart. In Northwest Arkansas, our business climate is geared toward giving. So nonprofit groups are an incredible way to give back to the community and get connected to people from every walk of life in Northwest Arkansas. All right, so LinkedIn now, I'm gonna go over in this PowerPoint just some of the top, the tips and, 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 and information about LinkedIn and its basics. And then I'm gonna exit out of this and go just into my LinkedIn profile to show you some of the things that I mentioned in this. Um, if, if, if this was live, I would have two screens up and I could easier go back and forth, but I don't, I don't wanna make you suffer through that. So I'll just go through some of these basics. I put some of these statistics in here just to make you understand that in 2016, LinkedIn was bought by Microsoft for $26 billion. So it's important, it kind of matters, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty big. Those of you who, who are under 30 are probably wondering what this second line went mobile in 2008. I love to leave that in there because I made this PowerPoint. I started it, I think in 2011. And folks, there was a time when you built a website and it didn't have an automatic mobile version. So I just, I just love this that LinkedIn was around uh, so long ago that actually going mobile uh, was a new and important thing. I just think that's a fun little historical thing. Over 575 million professionals in 200 countries. It's huge. The most important stat on the screen right now is, is this fourth one down. 38% of users are millennials and it's growing. I can remember when I first started teaching LinkedIn workshops, I think that was in about, I, I, I think I, I started teaching the workshop in 2012. I actually got on LinkedIn in 2011, yes. And at that time, I think this was 6%. 6% of the people on LinkedIn were under the age of 30. This has grown tremendously. Uh, I know at the Walton College Career Center, they require students going through their career center to set up a LinkedIn profile and they review it for them. Uh, LinkedIn profile is almost a replacement in many ways for a resume today. So very important. And there is at least one executive on LinkedIn from every Fortune 500 company in the United States. I'm going to show you an executive, uh, two executives from two Fortune 500 companies in Northwest Arkansas on LinkedIn a little bit. The profile matters. Your profile photo matters. It needs to be a professional looking headshot. 
we have, if you just type in professional headshots, Northwest Arkansas, we have so many photographers who do entire packages for 99 bucks. They'll take it outside, they'll take it inside, they'll give you a JPEG, a PNG, they'll give you the proper size for your LinkedIn profile, they'll give you a larger size to put on your website. The picture really matters. If you truly cannot afford the $99 to have a professional headshot set, I tell people, go outside on a sunny day, get where the sun is up but not in your eyes, get in front of a really neat looking like rock building or brick building and have someone take your picture for you. And you can, you can come up with a really good looking, uh, just don't do it in your house, don't do it in the mirror. It's not a selfie, it's a, it's a, it's a professional profile shot. And so you can even look up on Google. I have a friend who showed me, you can Google how to take a professional headshot photo at home. Just, just make it where it, it looks good. Um, your LinkedIn profile address, every resume now, that's what people do. They put their LinkedIn profile link, the URL on their uh, resume so that they can keep their resume down to one page. The modern thing is a resume should not be one, more than one page. So there might be when you start getting old like me, that's hard to do. I've had a lot of jobs for a long time. So you can keep the descriptions of your jobs short and put your LinkedIn profile on there and they can click on it. And this gives you some tips. Um, when you're on your profile in the top right corner, it has a specific link and it says edit your custom URL and it has a little pro pro process you go through. It takes like two minutes and you can take all those numbers off at the end so that your profile is just like mine. So mine is just linkedin.com slash in slash Martha Wandigan. And so there's a way to do that to make that simpler. I'm going to show you in a second on LinkedIn how to look up people's profiles anonymously. LinkedIn is not supposed to be for dating. LinkedIn is not supposed to be for stalking your ex-boyfriend or your ex-husband or your ex-husband's new girlfriend, all right? So that's not why LinkedIn was created. So LinkedIn lets people know you looked up their profile when you do. It says, so-and-so looked up your profile because we're all here to do business, right? We're all here to grow our businesses and have responsible adult connections. So that's the default. I am going to show you how to switch it to anonymous. There are times you want to do it for that that are not the funny examples I just gave you. If you're wanting to look up candidates for a job and you don't want them to know that you're somebody at the company reviewing um, resumes, of course. I'm going to put myself on anonymous on this because I'm going to show you a bunch of people's profiles and I don't want them going, why is Martha Londigan coming on my pro profile three times today, right? So there's, there's a common reasons like that. Um, you can introduce yourself to people that you're connected with, with messages. I always advise people, if you connect with someone on LinkedIn, don't send them. I hate, ugh, I do not like when I accept a connection request from someone and I can tell they're a saleswoman or a salesman and they instantly send me a message trying to sell me something. That is off-putting. I mean, at least wait and see if I even maybe, you know, like people send me a message about, you should use this in your bank lending practices. I haven't worked at a bank in a year and a half. They didn't even take the time to read my profile, right? And then sent me that message. So I'm gonna show you some, some fun ways to connect with people on LinkedIn when I pull it up um, live. One thing I, I can show you though, that I want to show you on right now, because this one is only available on the phone. It is not currently available uh, because uh, LinkedIn has turned this uh, feature off right now. But if you pull up, if you pull up your LinkedIn, so I'm going to put this up. Hopefully I can't see. Morgan, can y'all see my phone? Up. Oh. oh, sorry. I was muted. Uh, yeah. Up or down? You know, I think, so I think if you stop sharing your screen, it will, we'll be able to see it bigger. Okay. Okay, um, I'll, I'll just do it in a minute when I go to the other part then. I'm going to show you something with LinkedIn that is only on the phone and it's a really fabulous networking um, connection. So uh, I'll do, I'll, I'll get out of this in a second and I'll show you all that. Um, sharing content. 
So I'm, I'm giving you a list and you'll get this when you get the PDF from us of all the types of things you should share on your LinkedIn feed. News of your workplace or your professional activity. Sharing posts of others. It's just like with the Facebook business page. Don't just talk about yourself. So at Startup Junkie, we share posts from all the chambers of commerce and the main streets. We share posts from our business clients when special things are happening for them. We share posts about educational opportunities that are going on with other groups, not just about ourselves all the time. When you find an article about a current trend or topic in your uh, work life, in your industry, share that out. Customer service examples. You can create a blog on your website where you save articles that you write. You want to put a picture of the topic and then you can copy that blog URL and paste it in your LinkedIn. And so you've written a blog. It's good content on your website. You can also post it on your Facebook and you can post it in your LinkedIn if it has to do with running your business or working in the industry you're in. LinkedIn is a no like, and trust. And I'm going to show you some examples in a minute of people who do a good job of letting their personality come out on LinkedIn, but at the same time, keep it professional. Give back to others by sharing their posts, educate people, inform, and entertain. Entertain does not just mean funny ha-ha, right? Like when we watch the Academy Awards every year, that's entertainment, right? Is every movie a comedy? No, every movie is not a comedy. So drama, things that are serious. What are serious issues facing your industry? Um, happy, sweet, romantic. What are happy things going on at your work? Um, what are thoughtful things? We have documentary movies, right? What are thoughtful things that you can share? Quotes, people love quotes about their industry or about your products you sell or what you do. Yes, you will do posts about your services. Yes, you will do posts about what you sell. Yes, you will do posts about your specials, but sell yourself last. So if you go through the list and educate one time, inform the next, post something funny, post something thoughtful, post something of somebody else's, and then you post about yourself, you'll be assured that you're not doing it too much. Company profiles, I'm going to show you some examples when I pull up the LinkedIn in a minute. Uh, company profiles are different than the personal, and I showed you some of that at the beginning where I showed you the Startup Junkie company page versus my personal page. This is an incredible way to get leads for business, to get leads for job opportunities, to find people within large companies. And I'm gonna simulate that for you in a live LinkedIn search. And you don't have to have a paid membership to do this. I do not have a paid LinkedIn. When you go up a level with LinkedIn and pay for the premium, that gives you the ability to send messages to people that you're not connected to. It gives you the ability to see every single person who uh, looks at your profile, for months and years in the past. It gives you access to data and information on LinkedIn users in your area, et cetera. But everything I'm showing you, I do not have a paid LinkedIn um, account. I've always just used the free one. LinkedIn, look at this stat. This is a true LinkedIn stat. Is 277% more effective at lead generation than other platforms. LinkedIn is a safe space. Everybody in the world is not on LinkedIn. Actually, about 70% of the people on LinkedIn have college degrees. They are interested in serious education and serious connections and growing their communities. So a group that I think forgets to get on LinkedIn a lot are very small businesses that are service providers. Is your business, is your flower shop, is your spa, is your hair salon, would you like to have upper to middle class income people who will be regular customers and interested in supporting your local business? If the answer is yes, then you should have a LinkedIn personal profile. I don't care if you're just a DBA sole proprietor and, and you are a hairstylist at a salon owned by someone else. You should have that LinkedIn profile. It's a great way for people to get to know you and say you're starting to get a lot of clients from the Walmart vendor world. 
Go out and connect with all your clients. It's a fabulous way to grow your business. Nonprofits. I get on nonprofits a lot when they reach out to me for consulting advice. Nonprofits. Do you need donors from upper to middle income households? Yes. Do you need volunteers and people to support your mission? Yes. Why do you not have a LinkedIn company profile page? Well, because we're a nonprofit. We're not a business. Yes, you are a business. It's just at the end of the year, you don't get to take the profit home. Nonprofit. The profit stays in the company. So all of these people should be on LinkedIn. All of these entities, all of these types, everyone who is in some form of business commerce should be on LinkedIn, I think. So I'm going to show you this exercise about how to reach out to people at large companies and get a connection to them that you can't find on the general website for the company. Uh, this slide has my uh, contact information. And the easiest thing, though, is just type in Startup Junkie Fayetteville, Arkansas, and go to our website. That's where you can always find us. And once again, a final thank you um, to Bank OZK uh, before I go into the live LinkedIn uh, demonstration. And there's Odwin Vaughn, odwin.vaughn at uh, ozk.com. He is just a really great, I see him out at community events all the time. I met Odwin at a networking event and we connected and we had a mutual friend and I told him about what I was doing at Startup Junkie and now here they are as major sponsors of a Startup Junkie program. So networking truly does work, I promise you. All right, let me show you now and Morgan help me know, let me see. Okay, I can see better now, great. So when you have your phone, it's so hard because of the light, but possible for you to pull up LinkedIn on your laptop and screen share from yeah and I can't you can't I'll just I'll guide y'all it's not real hard so when you've got your phone up on LinkedIn I wonder if it'll help if it's my profile instead if that shows so like here's my profile you can see it a little bit down here at the bottom if you have yours just look at your phone it has home my network which is the little double heads and I have this spelled out in the presentation post notification and jobs if you hit the people heads when you hit the people heads you will see this little blue button show up here and this little blue button is a little head with a plus and it's down here in the corner i don't know if you can see it there in the normal world when you hit that blue head with a single person so you hit network and that blue head Everyone who has their LinkedIn pulled up will populate. So this is super fun to do when you go to conferences, when you go to networking events. Every time I teach this class in the normal world, I have everybody do that. And then you can see everybody who's on LinkedIn that's in the room and you can just hit connect, connect, connect. LinkedIn has this turned off right now because it saves them a lot of engineering time and software and all that good stuff because people aren't doing networking events but know that exists. And remember, it's super easy. You hit people heads, my network, then you hit the blue people head. Right now it's just got QR code and contact thing. It's pretty worthless, but it's just a wonderful networking feature when the world opens back up. And I've read about it, LinkedIn said, as soon as everything opens back up, that will be back out there. So now I'm gonna screen share and go back to my desktop, um, LinkedIn. Like I said, that feature is not on uh, the uh, desktop version. That is only on the mobile version. So here we are in my LinkedIn feed. My profile's over here. So these are people that I have followed or I have sent a connection to in LinkedIn. And here's that little people heads that's at the bottom of your phone that just shows all the information. This is where you click to see how many connections. I have a connection with 2,501 people. Here's like teammates. It shows who on my team. So Alvin is um, someone that's on my team here that I work with, people that I'm connected with LinkedIn. And so you always just click over here and can go to your full profile. And then this is where you can look up here who viewed your profile 
and this, see Catherine's online. Yay, Catherine, I'm glad you looked up my LinkedIn profile. She's actively participating in the workshop. And so you can see people who have looked you up. This is Tom Wavering. He runs an innovation hub in Oklahoma City. I just had a meeting with him and look what a good networker is. He has already sent me a LinkedIn connection request. Wonderful. That's exactly what you should do with LinkedIn. I just met him two hours ago. We had a great conversation about entrepreneurship in Norman, Oklahoma, and he sent me a LinkedIn uh, connection request. So LinkedIn's connections, not friends. All right. Now, let's talk about when you don't want people to know you viewed their profile. So you go here to your profile and go to settings and what's the P word? Privacy. And then here it says, these are where you can set yours up, your account preferences, what kind of visibility you want to have. Listen, I have had my LinkedIn wide open since 2011. Everybody can see it. Anybody can send me a connection. I've never had a problem. That's my experience. You can decide, but I also will say, um, I am, I'm also married. Sometimes my single friends, my friends who are, are not married have said they get um, more, you know, messages because they've listed themselves as, of course, I tell them, well, take that single thing down off your Facebook. Just don't have anything. It's nobody's business anyway. Um, but most of the women I talk to also agree that they don't have a lot of problems on LinkedIn with people sending them connection requests that are inappropriate. But listen, folks, if something like that happens, first of all, I just deny the connection if they send an inappropriate message. I ignore the message and most of the time they go away. Someone's going to have to send me an inappropriate message multiple times before I block them. And I honestly can tell you in all the years I've been on LinkedIn, it really just started about three years ago when LinkedIn got so popular in Northwest Arkansas. And honestly, it is maybe once a year that I have some random weird dude who will not quit sending me messages. And I don't want to play the game. I don't want to have to get snarky. I can if I want to. I just don't want to. And so I will just block them. And that ends it. You just block them and they can't see your LinkedIn. I've never had them follow up, try to send me an email, try to come on my Facebook. Never had a problem. They got the message loud and clear. I was not responding to their messages on purpose. Yes, I saw your messages. I don't want to respond to your messages. And so I blocked you. And honestly, so we're talking three or four times since 2011. So it is just a wonderful safe space. But you can click here on this visibility of your profile. And then it says profile viewing options. Choose whether you're visible or viewing in private mode. You click on that. So right now, if I look up Morgan's uh, LinkedIn profile or I look up uh, Alvin's, it'll tell them I looked at their profile. But I can go down here and click anonymous. And that's all you have to do. See how it automatically saves? Now, here's what's interesting. Because I did that, now because I have a free account, LinkedIn says, okay, you want to be anonymous? Well, guess what? Everybody's going to be anonymous to you. So now when I go here and I want to see who looked up my profile, LinkedIn says, uh-uh, you're on anonymous, so we're not going to give you that for free. But if you want to pay us for it, that's, that'll help feed the beast, right? Then, then we'll let you do that. So that's, that's a great feature. LinkedIn, just get in there and play around with it. It is very simple to set up your personal profile. Then you can um, set up a, a, a company business page with LinkedIn as well. And then you can share from your business page over to um, your uh, uh, personal page. And then that also helps to promote your business. Over here, I clicked on this one for work. There is a learning system called Linda. You can get insights on your page, talent solutions. You can hire LinkedIn to help you attract talent to your uh, business. You can just do posts on your business uh, company page for LinkedIn and on your personal to attract talent. You don't have to hire them. They've got sales solutions. They've got marketing. So they, there is an incredible array. And here's the great thing about LinkedIn. Live human beings will help you. You can send a message in all of those channels and they will email you and they will actually call you. And so you can go, if I clicked here, it'll take me back to Startup Junkie. Now I'm an admin. So if we did a post, if Caleb, like here's a post that Caleb did on our LinkedIn um, an hour ago. 
if I want to share this to my personal, because I'm an admin, which you as a business owner, if you set up a company page, you're gonna be an admin. I have to click up here and view as a member, okay? And when I view it as a member, then now I can go here and I can hit share and it will share to my personal. Do you see that? So you'll have to switch to just being a member if you want to share from the company page, or it, but only if you're an admin. If you just work there and you wanna promote your company and share its LinkedIn post, then you'll just look it up in, in your feed. One of the last things I wanna show you that's specifically about how to be a good uh, networker is how to do uh, LinkedIn searches to find people. So an example is a few years ago, I had a client that had developed a product for canine officers. And he had had these really fancy, nice brochures made up and he had put them in envelopes and mailed them to major police stations throughout the four state region and crickets. Nobody was responding. Well, the problem was he was just putting canine officer, so-and-so police department. And so I said, what we need to do is find out who the canine officer is, the name, and put that name on the envelope. Well, a lot of these smaller towns, especially the police departments, didn't even have a website. The bigger ones didn't have all the staff listed. They don't want to mess with that. And so what you can do is go up here in the, the search for, um, for LinkedIn. You go to this home and go up here to start searching. And we put in K9 officer. And when you hit the search bar, it gives you a filter menu. So you have to put the search in first. And so we want an actual person. We want the K9 officer for the Dallas Police Department or anyone in the Dallas Fort Worth Metro. You have to click it and hit show results. And look here. Robert Parsons, K-9 officer at Haltom City Police Department, Fort Worth, Texas. Steve Anamarchi, K-9 officer, certifying official for National Dallas Fort Worth area. You get a name. You get a name to put on the envelope. Or you can reach out via LinkedIn and send them a message. You, you may have to send a connection. Now mine, I have mine wide open where people can send me a message even if we're not connected. But if they have it where you have to have a connection, you, you would click on Robert Parsons and you could send him a connection request or it looks like his is like mine. He has his set up where you can just message him. So that's a way to do that. This is also helpful if say you are an HR person and you have developed a wonderful program about diversity and inclusion training, and you would like to present that to uh, logistics people and drivers at JB Hunt. If you go to the JB Hunt website, if you go to the Tyson Foods website, they don't list all of the thousands of people who work there and their name and their email and their phone number. They don't do that, they're too big. So you could start out and type in diversity, we want it to be a person, not a company. We want in the Springdale, Arkansas, or what I typically like to use that I think is best is the Fayetteville, Greater Fayetteville, Arkansas area. I find that that works best. That's the original area that LinkedIn assigned for us. Only about a year ago did LinkedIn start letting us have Springdale and Bentonville. So this is a wide one that I like to use. And then we can go to JB Hunt Transportation Services and see what the results are. Boom. Leif Espy, Manager, HR Operations, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Analyst at J.B. Hunt Transport. Sheffield Spence, Associate Inclusion Partner at J.B. Hunt Transport. If you go to the J.B. Hunt website, you're not going to find that. But you can then pull up Sheffield's profile, send a connection, send a message. Don't be too aggressive. Like I said, I think it's better that if you're in HR and she's in HR, you're in HR and he's in HR. Make the connection. Then immediately just do a post about this wonderful new training program you have. They'll see it. That's another beautiful thing about LinkedIn. It doesn't control who sees your posts in your feed like Facebook does. As of now, everybody will see 
whatever you post on your LinkedIn, if they're connected to you. They don't filter it out with the algorithm like Facebook does and cut it down to about 10% of your followers like on Facebook. So that is another really great um, thing about LinkedIn. Um, I've gone a little bit over time. I'm not going to be one bit offended if some of you want to jump off. Thank you so much for um, attending today. And Caleb will be sending out, like I said to you, um, a PDF copy of the PowerPoint presentations. So you'll have all those little tips and tricks. Um, I am going to go on because I just want to show you a few people that I think do this really well. So that if you want to have some role models for how to be good at LinkedIn, uh, one that I want to put down is a woman that is an attorney and I met her because she and I have an attorney mutual friend. She had seen me do a LinkedIn post about her friend and they, uh, they know each other because they're both lawyers. And then she sent me a connection request. Her name's Radiance Harris. And she is an incredible national trademark attorney. She mostly works with small businesses. She has posted, a, she's drafted a book called Trademark Like a Boss. And like she sent me a message and said, hey, I'd like to connect with you. Let's do a Zoom together. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this really cool, important person wants to get to know me who lives on the East Coast. I mean, that is just so cool. And we met doing this. I love uh, how, how with her posts, you can go down here to all activity. Do know this also about um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn will show other people what you've liked. So it is very, it, it, its privacy is not as harsh and, and shut down as Facebook and Instagram because it's not supposed to be personal. It's a networking platform. So Radiance replied to this woman's post. Radiance uh, liked, um, so this is a post she did. You can see this is hers, but she also liked this of Ryan Palmer. So do know if people do posts, um, people are going to be able to see that you liked their post. And so notice here she is uh, talking about, uh, she gives information, she educates the public. The average award in a trademark infringement case is north of a million dollars. Make sure you do trademarking right, all right? If you don't want to just see everything she's been involved in, you just want to see her posts, you click here. You can't build your brand without protecting it first. Quote, so there's the one where I talked about that like entertainment. Here's a customer service example, someone she worked with to help them recently get a trademark. Here's a testimonial someone put up on her uh, Google or her Facebook and then she transferred it over to her LinkedIn. Here's a fun post of her talking about wanting to be outside and how exercising is good for our health. So she has a lot, here's her shopping for, you know, she's sharing about herself. So this, you don't have to do this, but she is very comfortable doing it. And as an author and as an attorney talking to people about private business stuff, people like to get to know you. Remember when I talked to you about Fortune 500 people? Well, here is proof of it. Shelly Simpson is the chief commercial officer. Uh, she's pretty much the, the person running J.B. Hunt these days. She is certainly the forward face of it. She is extremely active on LinkedIn. I haven't personally seen her on the other platforms, but she is very active on LinkedIn. And I, although I think she has an assistant who helps her with the post, I think she sees every single post that goes out. They are very personalized. She talks about the company. She talks about uh, celebrating their company. She puts quotes. Here's a quote from Mr. Hunt from years ago. Uh, here's a fun casual day talking about them wearing track suits to work because of the weather. So fun and simple. Here's a quote she put up. Here's another quote she put up. Here's one about um, things going on at JB Hunt. Here's one about, you know, kind of boring about equipment and integrated solutions. So Shelly Simpson does a really great job on um, LinkedIn. A company that does a great job on LinkedIn is the Nabholtz Corporation. And a lot of people don't know this, Nabholtz has its own in-house marketing. They do not hire outside marketing people. On every Nabholtz social media channel, the first thing you're gonna see is people, not buildings, not cranes, not bulldozers, because the number one issue facing construction is talent. And so they use all of their channels to attack, attract talent, to make people see that Nabholtz is a great place to work. Nabholtz is part of our community. 
They want school board members who are voting on contracts with them to like them and to see that they're very much involved in the community. So yes, they're gonna post about themselves. We built this medical center. But here's a fun one. Here's clearing a little snow for one of our clients. One more service we do, showing customer service. Celebrations of team. Here's one, just a team celebrating. They're all Kansas City Chiefs um, fans at this office. Posts about hiring. LinkedIn is a great place to attract talent. Uh, Post about children. So here's the emotional appeal, right? One of our South operators lays out how construction is changing to meet the needs of K to 12 students. So Nabholtz does a great job. It makes its LinkedIn personal, but yet very business focused, uh, much of, of like what they do on their, um, on their other social media channels and on their website. Uh, NOARC is a great human resource association. So if you're involved, I get on networking groups themselves and they've all got a Facebook and, a, and an Instagram. I'm like, do y'all have a LinkedIn company page? No? Okay, you're a networking group of business professionals and you don't have a company page for LinkedIn. And they all just giggle. No, we should have done that, shouldn't we? Yes. So associations, nonprofit groups can set up a company page. So this is a group, an HR group in Northwest Arkansas professionals. They usually meet, I think, once a month and they have a LinkedIn page as well. So anyway, that is my uh, formal, formal presentation. Um, so I'm sorry I went a little over time. I think I chatted too much at the beginning, but you know, when it's a small group like this, we get to let everybody introduce themselves. And so I think that is super fun and I like that. Um, and I don't see, yep, I don't see where anybody has any questions. If anybody does, I'll be happy to stay on for a second. Um, I don't see any, but I appreciate all of you. Sorry, we didn't have any questions. I think, um, Clay did list a resource um, in the chat. It's a book called Enchantment, Guy Kowalski's book. And then he also said that many companies have an option to put your LinkedIn URL in the application flow, which is great. Yeah. Um, Annie said, thank you so much for your suggestions. Catherine said, this is excellent. And she'll share these resources with the women she serves. Jody said, thank you. And Allison, or Alice said, thank you for an awesome presentation. And Debbie also said, thanks. So that's yeah. all we can chat. Yeah. Well, thank you all for attending. Just, you know, get excited. I mean, think about when you first started Facebook, you didn't know what you were doing on there either, but obviously you didn't break Facebook, right? The world didn't come crashing down. So get on LinkedIn and play with it and learn and just get to know it. And then the main thing is go out and get a lot of connections. It's super fun seeing all these. You're like, oh, I haven't talked to her in two years. She has a LinkedIn profile and connect with a bunch of people, follow a bunch of pages. You know, I follow, like I follow Melinda Gates. I follow Ray. Radiance. I try to find national women's groups to follow. There's some fun ones. There's some like female lead ones that, that post really kind of funny snarky quotes and things about women and, and I just love it. And so it's a fun little feed that's out there. It's about how women are treated in business. Um, you can follow magazines, Forbes magazine, Inc. magazine, um, all, all of those. So there's, there's lots of really good rich content and I don't groan a lot of time. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll get on my Facebook and I'm just like, oh my gosh, why do people post this stuff, right? I don't do that with LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a lot more fun and I always learn something on there and it's just a really great way while we're all trapped inside to connect with each other, but then remember it to connect with people after you start going back to live networking events. So thank you all for attending. Thanks.